and welcome once again to this evening's lecture. This month's EPIC lecture held in collaboration with the EPIC channel that celebrates Indian heritage. Uh, we have with us today Professor Ashish Mohan Kokar who will be presenting an illustrated lecture on a century of Indian dance 1910 to 2010, Revival and Resurgence. To briefly introduce our speaker for the day, Ashish Mohan Kokar is a reputed dance critic historian with 43 published books to his credit. He is the most widely read dance columnist of India on the net and also the first arts administrator of India in his generation to have been nominated for a Princeton Fellowship in Public Admin. He served Delhi State Academy, INTAC and Festivals of India in France, Sweden, Germany and China. Ashish has made seminal dance TV programs, hosted and curated many dance festivals, and is on the boards and committees of many cultural organizations. He visits many universities worldwide teaching dance aesthetics and history, mentors many young dancers, and edits, publishes India's only yearbook on dance, Attend Dance, now in its 18th year. He was the dance critic of the Times of India for two decades in Delhi and then Bangalore and is the inheritor curator of India's largest dance archives, the Mohan Khokar Dance Collection and chairman of the Dance History Society. Ashish was chief advisor to India's first dance museum coming up in Kerala. He's hailed to be the gold, uh, gold standard in Indian dance writing, filming and documentation. He has instituted five awards annually to help young dancers reach out. His academic dance discourses uh, now is in its seventh year and it's very popular. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together to welcome our speaker for the evening. Once again, Professor Ashish Mahmoud. Thank you for the kind words of introduction. I'm grateful to Habitat and Epic TV channel for affording us this opportunity to share the history and heritage of Indian dance this evening with you. Epic channel and Habitat have done yeoman service in the field of culture we all know. And this documentation helps the process of how dance and music and arts happen as and when they happen. So it is a very milestone moment for some of us working in the field to see the process itself unfolding. There's only one preamble since it's being documented. I would request you not to make copies on your cell phone because then the cell phone is caught in the camera. And if anyone wishes to have a good copy, you can always write to me. Knowledge must spread. The films which you'll be seeing will be shared with all of you. If anyone is interested in getting a copy, don't make a bad copy on your cell phone. You can always get one. 100 years of dance history is a figurative term. Our traditions are ancient. We have a continuous work in progress, so to say, in many, many classical folk and traditional forms historically. But we take 100 years and revival and resurgence as a key peg for the simple reason that is in these last hundred years or a century or so that most of the forms have been either revived, platformed, sustained, represented and made accessible. That you will also see in the film which will be shown with evidence of how dance was viewed in society, what is the sociology and anthropology of dance and how various gurus, naturnars, Gunijans, Gharanas contributed to this process. So 100 years to be covered in 60 minutes means actually two years in less than a minute. So inadvertently we might be not able to cover each performer, each institution, each form in the country. But the idea is to show you milestones and benchmarks and how dance in Indian society evolved as a mainstream cultural identity. The most common symbol of Indian, of India today, the country, not the news magazine, is actually Nataraja. If you see in any television interview, any drawing room, any person, Nataraja is a binding symbol, even for those who may not know 
what its implication and what its meaning sometimes could be. From Bihar to Balochistan maybe, from Andamans to Kashmir, there will be some motive of Nataraja's association. And it is not just dancing Nataraja, but the concept of universe in motion and movement. And since dance is the art of motion, dance is the art and poetry of movement, it is symbolic that when we think of Indian dances, the origins of divinity become very, very important, which is why the roots belong to temples, the patronage is attuned to those temple structures, and once patronage goes in colonial India in the last four or five hundred years, there is a decline in the fortunes of both the dancer and the audience, which is why Kalida said in Malvikagdamitra, both plant like creepers, creeping plant, not the creepers as in a normal vocabulary we use in modern India today. Both plants and artists need support. Patronage plays a very important part in dispensation and understanding of our art forms. Earlier it was the temples, then it was the courts, and now it is the government, or many, many bodies and institutions created specifically for the purpose of understanding and appreciation, our cultural links and identity. What is cultural identity? When we think of India as such a vast country, the size, scale and dimension and substance of maybe two Europe with varieties put in, we always think of as one uniform term, or very, very homogeneous. It is very, very heterogeneous.